Life without adventure is not a life at all. Hi, this is Mavi of the Mavinical Life and Travel Blacks. Um, an overseas Filipino workers. Ano po ba ang ibig sabihin nito? So, yun po yung tatalakayan natin for today. So, how to become a successful overseas Filipino workers. Sa karamihan po sa atin, ang pagiging isang OFW is really a challenge. Bakit po ba? With so many things that you need to consider when you go out of your country, you need your family behind, you leave your uh, children behind, your friends, and an- ano pa yung iyong mga nakasanayan na dapat mong baguhin when you're abroad. So, tingnan po natin. So, for us, especially for those working abroad, many of us actually are successful. Yeah, but the sad story is marami rin po ang hindi successful. So, it really depends on the person. It really depends on the determination of the person and the persistency or maybe perseverance of the person to really achieve her goals in life. So, let's see po. So, what are the things that you need to know so that uh, while you're abroad, you can maximize your stay there and maximize your earnings as well. Okay, so about nine. Okay, so first is for you to set your financial goals. Number two, know your priorities. Number three, Make sure to have your savings. Number four, invest money. Number five, avoid vices. Ayan. And then number six, have a record of your expenses. Number seven, avoid debts. Number eight, investing in yourself. And finally, enjoy a work-life balance. Okay, so yan po yung um, mga bagay na dapat po nating uh, isa puso at isa isip while we are working abroad. So, let's talk about first our tips or tip number one. So, set your financial goals. So, madali lang po siya actually. It's just that you need to remember the reason why you opted to leave your family behind and work abroad. Most of us, especially the parents, wanted to give a decent life to her family or to his family like owning a house, buying a car, um, owning a business, send children to school or to private school, and of course, pay debts. Ayan. So, marami po tayong reasons why we are um, uh, trying to look for a more um, high-paying salary abroad. So, therefore, it is critical for us to spend our money wisely. So, sa katulad ko rin po, um, una po, nung ako yung umalis ng bansa, iniisip ko din, dapat pagdating ko doon, mag-iiba yung buhay mo or mag-iiba yung buhay ko. Dapat yung kinagawian ko back home, iibahin ko na siya to be a successful one. Although hindi po ganun kadali para maging successful, but at least I'm trying my best to be a successful one. So, ayan po. So, dapat alam mo at siniset mo na yung financial goals. Ano ba yung plan mo for the future? Ano ba yung ini-aim mo? Bakit kailangan ka mag-work abroad? Okay. And then number two, know your priorities. So with all these things that coming into your life when you're abroad, marami pong pwedeng mangyari. Maraming um, hihingin yung family mo, maraming needs yung family mo. At the same time, marami ka wishes, not just needs. So wishes or wants na gusto mong ma- mabili while you're working abroad. Sabi nga nila, kaya isa sa reason, kaya gusto mong magtrabaho abroad, is to have or to buy your wants or your wishes. Ayan. So, with these priorities in mind, you know what to prioritize when you receive your paycheck. 
which should be tied up to your financial goals. So, kung ano yung plano mo, ano yung financial goal mo in going abroad, dapat nakatay up po yung mga priorities mo. If you want really to build your own house, dapat po nandoon yung priorities mo. Or if you really want to have your own business in the future, kailangan pag-ipunan mo siya. So, yun yung priority mo na sinasabi natin. So, dapat clear po sa atin, once we have our financial goal, automatically, we should know what our priorities are. Okay, so yan po. Number three, make sure to have your savings. Okay, well, savings. When I was in our country, or when I was working in the department, well, in the Department of Education uh, in the Philippines before, I save money based on what is uh, the excess amount of money from my payments to my debts, my obligations, ganyan, at yung ano pang mga needs ko. Kapag may sobra, then that's the time sinisave ko siya, which is not correct. So, it is the normal practice of us that savings come from after we pay our debts. Patapos natin magbayad ng utang after we shop what we want or maybe we want to shop gadgets na matagal mo nang gustong bilhin. So, since Miss Veldo ka, bibilhin mo siya. And then, it should be the other way around. The formula should be salary minus savings. So, pag nareceive mo yung paycheck mo, bear in mind, una, kailangan may savings. You set aside your savings first before you have to like um, divide the money or um, budget the money for different expenses. So, una, at least meron kang percentage for your savings, right? So, in this way, you already set aside money for your future projects or for your priorities. Kung ano man yung priorities mo, nakaset doon sa nung nag na umalis ka ng Pilipinas, nisinet mo yung financial goals mo, and then nagkaroon ka ng priorities, dapat uh, may, mayroon kang savings for that. Okay. And then remember that need should be the triggering points and not your wish or things that are not necessary. So when you buy something, it should not be the wish or the wants. It should be the need to buy something or to have something that triggers you to spend money out of your pocket or out of your salary. Okay. And then, tip number four, invest money. If you have an extra money, then why not invest on, well, like something that your money will be earning. In my case, I invest some amount of my money in the credit cooperative which is safer than any other investment. Sa akin lang po yun, kasi uh, feeling ko po, dahil I was actually doing that before, or I, I am doing that, currently ginagawa ko rin siya, so for me, uh, safe naman po yung credit cooperative, nag-earn yung pera mo. But then there are several ways in which you can invest your money. So pwede po kayong uh, mag-attend ng mga seminars about that, but be sure not to put all your money in one basket. Tama po ba? So, kapag nag-invest po kayo, huwag niyong ubusin doon. Baka kailangan nyo lang certain percentage or certain amount of money para lang merong kayong investment. Pero huwag niyong ilalagay yung pera doon. Kasi what if uh, hindi siya nag naging successful or baka mamaya na peke lang kayo. Something like that. Okay? And then, number five, avoid vices. Mga bisyo po. It comes actually in different sizes and shapes. Yung bisyo po natin may come in terms of gambling, uh, alcohol, smoking, or even shopping. Di po ba? So, parang yun yung bisyo. Every time na meron kang sweldo, every time na kaka-receive ka ng salary mo, you really like feel I want to buy something or I want to mm, well nasa sa inyo po yan usually kasi meron na kayong plano before pa magsweldo so ask you to spend without the 
um, need to do it, then you will end up a zero balance in your account. So, habang nag-spend kayo at hindi nyo siya masyadong inisip, malamang maubusan na kayo ng pera. There's no harm in relaxation, but it should be minimal. Okay po ba? Pwedeng like watching movie, minsan kakain sa labas, o minsan mag uh, punta ka sa mga recreation facilities. Um, hindi po masama yun, but you need to minimize all those expenses kung sa tingin nyo makaka uh, tulong to para sa iyo physically or emotionally then go for it but be sure to minimize those expenses okay there are other options especially if you're working abroad other options would be spending time with your fellow FWs like going to the park beach watching movies sports etc or maybe mag video ki kayo all together so pwede po yan or mag sports kayo Yan, mga sports activities. Yan. And then, tip number six, have a record of your expenses. Usually po, kapag meron tayong paya, pera, hindi po natin naisip na mag-record kasi alam naman natin yung mga ginagastos. But then, while you have your record, it will tell you somehow, ah, dito pala napupunta yung mas malaking percent ng money ko. So, it's really good to have actually a tracking of your expenses so that you can adjust it or remove this kind of expenses when you feel it's not really necessary. So, yun po. So, ito yung income mo, ito yung expenses mo. Your expenses should not be more or greater than your salary or your income. Okay. And then, because you're living abroad, Marami tayong mga um, utang nung umalis tayo. So, but then, when you're working abroad, dapat po, we need to avoid debts. Ano po ba yung mga yon? Many of us fall into the trap of buying something like through credit cards, acquiring business, mga ganyan. Back home, magpapadala tayo ng pera kasi magbi-business or gusto nating bumili ng sasakyan when you're abroad kasi kailangan mo siya. So, installment basis, usually ganun po siya. Sometimes po, uh, we really need to purchase a car through financing, which is very true to all, especially if you just arrived in a certain country. And then you will be working and you feel the need to have a car which you can use when going to work, errands, going somewhere else, which all, which will be cheaper than commuting or maybe using or riding a taxi. Just make sure that you can sustain the payments out of your salary and the car should not be that high-end para hindi po siya mahal and so that it will be more economical in terms of its cost, fuel, or maintenance. Kasi po, pag maganda rin po yung car, high-end, or AUV, pag malaki po yung engine, so malaki rin po yung maintenance cost mo, malaki rin fuel and all magastos din po siya. Okay. So, marami pong ways na pwede pong makatipid. Okay? Investing in yourself, that's number eight. If you're actually um, in other country, it's really wise for you to invest in your health. So, pwede kayong kumuha ng medical insurance or mag-enroll kayo like for OFWs, usually like in New Zealand, kapag 3 years yung contract mo, you're entitled to public health services. So, pwede kayong mag-enroll sa isang um, center or clinic which is run by the government. So, subsidized naman po siya. So, it's really good for you to have your medical insurance or maybe um, joining or mag-enroll ka sa isang health center or maybe if you want to enhance your skills and knowledge you can enroll for some kind of training or capacity building program ayan kasi in the end makikinabang din po kayo sa uh, inyong um, inaaral ayan and also it will also be uh, good to have a training 
improvement or enhancement of your skills para in the near future, pwede mong i-apply yun no? if you want to look for another job. And then of course, number nine, which is really important, enjoy a work-life balance. So, hindi naman po pwedeng puro na lang tayo. Work ng work, and then hindi tayo nag enjoy So, it's really good for us to uh, make sure that we're enjoying life and we balance it with our work. Ayan, so, while we work like five times a week, pag weekend, pwede tayong mag-unwind. Pwede tayong lumabas, pwede tayong mamasyal, pwede tayong mag-holiday kapag may holiday, para naman po ma-recharge po tayo. Ang lessons learned ko po when I was working um, back in our country, sa Philippines po, masyado na akong um, babad sa trabaho, so nawawala na yung work-life balance. So that... Uh, dumating po yung point na naboryo na ako, napagod na ako, um, parang super stress na ako. So, kailangan po talaga maroon tayong mag, magbalanse ng ating work and life. So, para ma-enjoy po natin, ano pa ba ang dahilan para tayo nag-work kung hindi naman tayo mag enjoy sa buhay natin? Di po ba? Life is so short na kailangan po natin i-enjoy at wag tayong ma-stress. So, yun po yung natutulang ko. And then, uh, yeah, so, for that matter po, kung ma-apply po natin tong mga tips na to, tong nine tips po on how to be a successful overseas Filipino workers, ayan po. So, kailangan po natin gawin siya. And then, also, we need to always communicate back home to our family. So, kailangan po natin sila naging kausap para alam po natin ang nangyayari sa kanila. Sila man din po ay hindi nag sa atin. At, isa rin pong tip ay, so magsasabi po tayo sa mga family natin kung kaya natin bang i-finance yung mga gusto nila or hindi. We need to be honest. Hindi po pwedeng, o oh, sige, bigay ka ng bigay ng pera, tapos pagdating ng oras, ikaw halos walang makain sa abroad. Mahirap po yan pag tayo nagkasakit. So, it's really good also for them to know kung gaano kahirap mag-work abroad and gaano kahirap mag-save ng money, especially kung mahal po yung mga bilihin, mahal ang rental, and, and so on and so forth. So, they need also to know na hindi po pinupulot ang pera sa abroad. So, yun po yung dapat ginagawa natin with our um, constant communication with them. We will be able to inform them, to tell them kung gaano kahirap para alam din po nila at hindi sila masyadong mag-expect sa atin. Di po ba? So, yun po yung mga tips na pwede po natin gawin for us to be able to maximize our stay or our work abroad. So, if you want to go back home at ayaw mo nang mag-work abroad, at least meron po kayong savings. At least meron po kayong madudukot at meron kayong investment. So, yun po. So, with that, I hope nakatulong po sa lahat. So, ang call to action po natin, always be wise, spend wisely your money. So, yan po parate. Hindi po porkit kumikita tayo. Sige lang. Pag umuwi tayo, para tayong Donya Princesa, hindi po ganun. So, kailangan po, alam po natin paano gastusin ng pera. And then, pag umuwi tayo, hindi pwedeng one day millionaire. Kasi lagi nating iisipin, ano ba yung sinet nating financial goals at ano ba yung mga priorities natin so that masabi natin nagawa ko siya, na-achieve ko siya. Kasi yun nga po yung reason kung kaya't umalis tayo, iniwan natin yung mga families natin kahit mahirap, kahit malungkot, kahit malayo sa kanila uh, for us to achieve our dreams yung sinet po natin goals sa buhay. So, maraming salamat po for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Have a nice day.